Hey there, I just wanted to announce that um, I'm ready to start releasing the Romans book I've been working on. Uh, those of you who've been with my channel for a while know I did a he book on Hebrews and then a book of Colossians. And this one is based on my messages on Romans. And on this one, I'm breaking it up into three parts. Uh, the first will cover one through four, chapters one through four, then five through eight, and then... Uh, uh, 9 through 11 and then I've got some appendix messages on the spirit in Romans that I'll probably stick in that one the reason I'm doing that is because it takes so long to transcribe and edit these so I'm doing it all myself and I want to get these out um, sooner than later so this message series was totally inspirational um, in other words I just turned on the camera and spoke about Romans and went through it and I got a lot of feedback that it was one of the best most encouraging um, Romans studies that people had gone through and I thought it was really good too uh, I'm sick of it now already because I've been editing for hours every day <laughs> for the last two months um, and I'm only through up to chapter four but anyway um, yeah Romans is the fifth gospel and the difference between the four Gospels that we're familiar with is that they, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, talk about Christ from the time of his incarnation uh, to his public ministry, to his death and resurrection, which was witnessed and written down. All that was written down by witnesses. And then he rose from the dead and he appeared to the witnesses. And then he ascended to heaven. Well, Paul's Gospel begins with Christ seated in the heavenly places after making propitiation for our sins and opens up the implications of everything he accomplished and what he's doing in the heavens and also in us. And Romans uh, 1 through 8 breaks up into two halves. The first four chapters deal with Christ, our righteousness, who is in heaven, who satisfied the court of heaven, so to speak, by putting his own righteousness on display um, in the way he dealt with us. And not only that, but our that righteousness is now obviously credited to us through faith. And then in Romans 4, it shows what that faith looks like on the earth. What does justification by faith look like? And it has to do with even though you know your body is dead and you can't produce anything, you know God who calls those things that are not as though they are and gives life to the dead is going to manifest Christ in your dead body. <laughs> and uh, justification is not just a matter of forgiveness of sins. It brings you into the blessing as an heir. And there's so little emphasis on the inheritance but with Abraham especially, we see that the promise of the gospel was that he would be the heir of the world. And so not only are we forgiven, but that was just a qualification to make us sons of God and to position us as heirs of God and brothers of Christ. So it's really glorious, the destiny we have, and that's in Romans. Um, Romans 5-8 through 8 deals with Christ now in us as the Spirit. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of like the gist of where I'm going with these messages. Um, I'm making the book available. I did a suggested price of $6 since it's only um, half uh, or it's only a third of the book, but it's dense. It's a lot of work. So it's a name your own price. You can do $6 or you can do more or you can get it for free, whatever. Um, I will put the link in the description. And I'm probably going to advertise this a few times because after all this work, I definitely want people to have it, you know. So, all right, take care.